QuickBooks Online 2023 Bank Reconciliation Reports Month Number 2 Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. You can open incognito by selecting the three dots if using Google Chrome. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Incognito window typing into the search engine QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one that Get Great Guitars is in, to the business view, the one the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two by going to the cog up top, switch the view down below. We're going to duplicate some tabs as we do every time. Right click on the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Then go in back to the tab to the middle so we can open up our reports on the left and bring in the balance sheet, the big balance sheet. Note that if you're in the business view, the reports are located in the business overview on the left hand side and then the reports. Back to the QuickBooks file for Get Great Guitars tab to the right so we can go to the reports on the left and then open up the profit and loss on the right and then close up the hamburger on the left and then scroll up to the top so we can change the dates in the middle 010123 to 022823. I'm going to look at this on a side by side, month by month basis, run it to refresh it, Jan, Feb, tote down below. Back up top, we're going to close up the hamburger again and change that range in 010123 to 022823 and see it on a side by month, side, month by month. Run it, Jan and Feb. We're now looking at the bank reconciliation process for the second month of operations, that being February in our case. Last time we had all but finished the bank reconciliation process, but wanted to hold off so we can focus a whole presentation on the reports of the bank reconciliation. So let's go back to the first tab so we can get into where we left off and so we can hit that green button. We're scrolling down. We're going to go into the accounting on the left hand side and the reconcile. Remember that if you're in the business view, then it would be under the bookkeeping on the left hand side and then the reconcile on down below and we're just going to resume because we had started already so we're just going to finish it up here and once again i just want to recap and emphasize the fact that this process although important is not the actual bank reconciliation this is the process of bank reconciling and the report that will generate is the bank reconciliation so let's just take a look at the difference between the two this one represents the balance that was on our financial statement uh the 101 595 on our bank statement that is matches our cleared balance because the cleared balance in our books is now represented by the things that we checked off down below as well as the beginning balance the beginning balance, which rolled over from the last time's beginning balance, 61, 241, 85. We checked off all the stuff in our system that matches what's on the statement for the additions, the 51, 9, 81, 20, and the subtractions, the 11, 633. That's why we get to the 101, 590, 05, as we can see with these three numbers down below, getting to that 101, 590, 05. However, that doesn't mean that our balance matches the 101 59005 that is on the bank statement because as we can see in our in our balance sheet 
Our balance is 95 to 5906. There's still a difference here. This just represents the cleared balance, which is in our books, but it's only the stuff that we checked off plus the beginning balances thus far. Uh, the things that we didn't check off, those are the reconciling items. Those are the things that are going to be showing up on the bank reconciliation. Those are the differences between the book balance and the bank balance. And this difference here, if it's not at zero, then you don't want to go forward. You want to fix it. Typically, it would be the general idea. You should be able to do that because you, you, if it's on the bank statement, you can adjust your books to the bank statement if the bank statement is right. So that has to be reconcilable. If it's not, then you're losing a lot of the confirmation. All right, that said, let's hit the green button. Let's take a look at the report that's generated when we do so. It says your reconciliation, this account, to see a report of this reconciliation, you can click review uh, reconciliation. Let's do that this time. Last time I just said done. We'll go into it. Here it is. Now, just a quick recap that you can find this report a couple different ways, right? If I go to the to the hand boogie on the left, we could find it by going down to the accounting on the left and then reconcile. And then within the reconcile, you've got your your bank uh, register information. And on the right, you've got the summary and history by account. If I go into the history by account, you got the cookies up top. Now we've got the two reconciliation reports that we've done thus far. The other way you can do, do it, which will get you to the same spot, but you might think of it as a report, even though remember that these reports are a little bit different than other reports, but you can type in here reconcile in the reports area and do it that way. Or you can scroll down and I think it's under the accounting area for my accountant reconciliation reports. If I go into that, then we've got our two reports. Now notice that QuickBooks does have both of these reports in here. And also note, it took us back to the cookie trail of the chart of account bank uh, register history here. So it's kind of outside the normal reports area, which makes sense because this isn't a report that's generated from us entering data, like with the plus button. It's a report that's reconciling the data that we entered to an external source, that being the bank reconciliation. And if we delete anything or something like that, if the report updates automatically, it's going to throw the reconciliation out of whack. That's why the reconciliation reports are kind of can be a little bit messy. Sometimes you want to save them after you reconcile in case something gets deleted in a prior period. But they do give you these this. The prior report is still here which is nice. Sometimes in accounting software, they only give you the current reconciliation, the one you just did. And so if I go into that, you could still, we still see the prior reconciliation. And if I go back into the history, we've got the current reconciliation uh, report. I'm sorry, I did that backwards. Here's the, the statement ending date. Here's the prior one below. And then if I go back, Here's the current one up top. Okay, so we're gonna go into that. Let's just do a quick recap on this. It looks similar to the last one. The first part is just a recap of what was on the bank statement. We've got the statement balance, the checks and payments that cleared, the deposits uh, that cleared, and the statement balance, which is just recapping what's on the bank statement. And it should match to what we checked off in the books, just like we saw when we checked everything off before we did the reconcile and hit the green button. The reconciliation really starts right here when you have, in essence, the statement balance, and then you have the difference between the statement balance and the register balance. The register balance being this 95 to 5906. We can verify that by going to our checking account. There's the 95 to 5906. So these three numbers are really the reconciliation but this isn't would not satisfy an auditor because you just you just plugged in the difference here and we don't know exactly what that difference is made up of i need to know what those items actually are so if i scroll down the detail here just represents the items that are cleared the things we checked off so it would just be the detail down here that we checked off not really necessary a little bit redundant these are the deposits that we checked off these items that we checked off in our system okay this is what we want the uncleared items that's what we're looking for so these are the checks that uh, that are that are in that we wrote 
that haven't cleared. Now, most of them are on 228. And so I would think, yeah, those are probably going to clear in March. We knew about them. The bank didn't know about them. We put them in our system because we do know about them. The bank isn't putting in in their system until they know about them, which will happen in March. I can verify that as of the time we do the reconciliation, because when I'm reconciling for the period in 228-23, it's gonna be sometime in March. So I can go onto my bank rec online, most likely, and see if they have cleared. The one that I'm concerned about right here, most likely is gonna be this one, because it was written in January. It didn't clear in January or February. So I'm starting to think what's going on with this? Did it get lost in the mail? Did state, you know, did Staples just not cash the check? That's the one that's a little bit funny. That's what the one we, where we might want to call our vendor and say, hey, look, there's a check that we thought we wrote. It doesn't look like it's cleared. We might want to be able to take preemptive action before Staples gets mad at us. That can often be helpful in your relationship with your vendors because they're gonna they're gonna, you know, you can if you're honest with the situation. So if you're tracking your your payments that can be a useful tool and then we've got our two deposits down here that also have not cleared which i can verify if they cleared in march then i'm okay with that so i'm going to say okay that that means that this 8590.99 minus the 2260 is the difference of the 633099 which is going to be that difference right there so that's going to be our our uh, report. And just remember that this this 633099, you might think I'm doing this to check those numbers. Remember, that's not exactly the case. I'm trying to figure out what the difference is exactly. And then I'm going to check those numbers because I want to make sure that those there's nothing wrong with those, that it is indeed just a timing difference. But if I can see exactly what the difference is, then then not only does it give me verification that my ending balance is correct in terms of the cash account but it also gives me verification that all the other transactions in place that that were, were leading to that ending balance are correct and all the other transactions that are taking place in time are going to help with the timing statement remember the balance sheet is as of a point in time the timing statement is generally the income statement and all these transactions due to being a double entry accounting system will have impacts on on some other side so the income statement is generated from the activity right and remember like you can get these ending balances using other software you could just you could just look you know at your bank statement and, and see how close your balance is to your bank statement and you can use other software that that'll pull in the ending balances of all your financial accounts, including liabilities sometimes, like, like your loans or your mortgage and stuff. And that's great, but it's only giving you a balance sheet. It's not, it's not making your income statement, which is the more difficult thing to do, which is the story of how you got to the end point. And so the reconciling the cash account gives you a lot better verification not only about where you're standing right now at this time to verify, but also about how you got there, the transactions that are included in it, which gives you more verification over other balance of the balance sheet, as well as the profit and loss, the activity uh, statement. So those are the bank reconciliations. Let's take a look at the trial balance, which I didn't do last time. And we did do some adjustments to the, to the uh, trial balance slightly for the, for the, for the uh, bank service fees and the draws. So I'm just gonna type in trial balance here and check it out, the trustee T to the B. And let's change the range from 010123 to 022823 and see it on a month by month, a side by side, run it to refresh it. And this is where we stand at this point in time. If your numbers match these numbers, then that's we're on the same page, if not, Try changing the date range and see if it's a, a date range issue in future presentations or possibly in another course or future section, we're gonna move on to uh, adjusting entry period and adjusting entries. So that is gonna be good times for sure.